Section 6. Penhoff plus Pangsept is the best answer. Gray points out that, in contrast to functional and neurophysiological theories of qualia, quantum mechanical theories lag far behind in terms of empirical research. He says, quote, no one has yet even measured any quantum mechanical processes in a manner that would allow it to be correlated with sensation. The processes pointed to by Hammerhoff and Penrose are, in their application to brain tissue, almost entirely theoretical, and their relationship to any kind of sensation is asserted merely by proxy, end quote. On the other hand, he's fairly confident that, as science progresses, such measurements will be achieved. Then we may find that quantum superpositions of the right kind and their self-collapses at the right time take place just as the theory says they should. At that point, says Gray, Quote, we would now have the systematic relationship with sensation needed to lend plausibility to a quantum mechanical starting point. End quote. Gray concludes that, uh, quote, despite its magisterial complexity, then, we see that in the end, the Hammerhoff Penrose theory of how different quantum suppositions in microtubules in different brain areas give rise to different qualia must rely for the origin of these differences on arguments taken from neuroanatomy and neurophysiology, end quote. Gray also argues that the theory is incomplete. He says... Quote, it offers no account of how differences at the Planck scale might relate to differences between qualia, nor of how differences in space-time in one brain might relate to differences in another brain observing the same scene at the same time. End quote. I find these judgments a little harsh, especially the second one, see below. But Gray does add some redeeming comments in Penhoff's favour. Quote, Nonetheless, the theory does offer an accounting principle of the origin of differences in qualia. Whether even this is testable in practice is another matter. But quantum mechanics has a habit of taking the absurd, putting it into a laboratory experiment and showing the absurd to be reality. So we should not write the Penhoff, the Penrose-Hammerhoff position off too lightly. And even an accounting principle of how qualia might arise is better than no account at all, end quote. I find the Penhoff theory attractive because it fits very well with the overall learning flexibility of behavior theory of qualia, which I find the most convincing, comprehensive approach to the problem of qualia. To summarize this LFB theory once again, it claims that Information alone is not enough to account for the learning that leads to flexible behavior. There must also be some energetic analog phenomenon, in addition to information, which guides animal learning. Qualia, according to the LFB theory, are just this phenomenon. The energetic analog nature of qualia can be accounted for by their accessing quantum phenomena such as the curvature of space-time. These quantum phenomena can have a direct and immediate effect on the brain, 
far more efficaciously than that of digital information alone. The genetically fixed range of mammalian emotions produce affects of this energetic analog nature in all mammals and possibly other species. Qualia always consist of sensory input from quantum phenomena merged with an internal emotional evaluation ranging from positive to negative, but generally neutral. Penhoff's reliance on space-time curvature to generate qualia is a form of extended mind thesis. In other words, it locates the complexity of qualia out in the world, not in the brain. Thus, even lower mammals, lacking higher brain areas, can experience complex qualia. And humans can have qualic experiences directly and immediately, without sensory input having to be processed by higher brain areas. All this provides a much sounder and more believable basis for the rewards and punishments required for learning from experience than that of the behaviorists who left qualia and effect entirely out of their model.